Hey, hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin and this is Full Purpose and Heart. For those of you that are new here, welcome along. Um, I am a homeschooling mom to three kiddos. So in this video, I want to share with you guys a new resource that I just grabbed for my kids. I keep like looking down here because I'm gonna grab them. Sorry about the shaky camera. Um, so I purchased these top student resources, books from Evan Moore. And I just wanted to show you guys what they look like on the inside in case it's something that you want to use. So to begin with, like I, okay, so I just talked about this in my last video, but in case you missed it, we are in the fourth quarter of our school year. And um, we've had kind of just a rocky school year for a lot of reasons, mostly because we've been traveling a lot. We sold our home. We're living in temporary housing right now while we wait for our permanent home to be finished. It's being built. Um, and so consequently, our curriculum has kind of ebbed and flowed and we've had good weeks and we've had really bad weeks. And so I wanted to find a resource that could help me gauge what level my students were on kind of across the board. So I saw these on Evan Moore, they were on sale, and so I picked them up. I am a real fan of Evan Moore for several reasons, and I have a ton of videos here on my YouTube channel um, kind of showing you guys the different kind of resources that Evan Moore provides. So a couple of reasons why I like them is number one, most of their resources are super colorful if it's like a worksheet based program. Um, I really enjoy color. I buy resources for each of my kids. So it's not like I'm making copies for a classroom set or anything like that. And so because of that, I want, I want it to be visually enticing and pretty. And Evan Moore does that for me. They always have a lot of really visually appealing products. And so that's one reason why I always love to buy them. The second reason why I love Evan Moore is because they have a K5 level. And if you're new to homeschooling, K5 is this, the space between a kindergartner and a first grader. So your student knows their alphabet and all of the letter sounds. They know most of their numbers. They can count to 20. They know their name. They can write. Like they have all of these skills, but they're not exactly reading yet. They're not exactly like at a first grade level. And so you're kind of in the middle and you wanna do some middle ground work. And that's one thing that I have found that Evan Moore has is like a K-5 like world where you can get a little bit of this, like an introduction to what kindergarten is, and then they kind of move to these late kindergarten concepts or K-5. Um, so I really love that. And then another thing that I really love about Evan Moore is their price point. And I've talked to a lot of you guys out there about this as to why I encourage people over there or I recommend Evan Moore is because sometimes we have to buy new curriculum or we're trying to find something different for our students or like me right now, we're rounding out the end of the year and I'm, I need something kind of to supplement or something different. And Evan Moore provides a resource where I don't feel like I'm investing a ton of money into a new publisher and a whole new curriculum. So if in the event we either don't finish the book or if it turns out I don't like it or whatever, it's not a huge investment on my part. So like these ones were on sale and they were $10 a piece. So for me, I think that that's, you know, incredibly valuable because I don't feel a big loss if we don't finish every single page in the book. Or sometimes it's a little bit more of a financial decision if you're going to invest in one of those other big publishing companies or, you know, you want to buy, I don't know, the second half of your math book or something like that. It's just more of an investment where I feel like these these resources don't have that. So anyway, that's just a couple of reasons why I love turning to Evan Moore. This is not a sponsored video. They didn't ask me to do this for you, them. I just really love it. So Hopefully that'll kind of give you some thoughts about that. Um, okay, so let me flip the camera around and I'm just gonna quickly flip through these. Um, actually, let me just kind of do it while I'm looking at you because I've had I've had a few problems with people swiping my videos, which is kind of weird. But um, I guess when you're not a really huge channel, then some people feel like they can swipe your video and then put it, make it their own. And that's easier to do when you're just looking at a book. So let me try and like do it this way. It won't be as easy, but 
listen to my words and I'll try to go quickly. So essentially the way that this book is, is divided up is by sections. So this is going to be your pre-K level here and they're going to have all of these, right? So you have STEM, science, computer science. This is social and emotional learning and geography. And then these ones down here are going to be your English sections. You have your alphabet, early writing, early reading, reading comprehension, and then numbers and counting, which is math, okay? So each section is divided by color code. So you can see those color codes there. And the way that I'm doing it with my students is that we are doing like three colors a day and then one page per color. So on the first day, we'll do like a page of the blue, and you'll see like this is their letter recognition. And up on the top here, Evan Moore always tells you what skills that you're practicing. So if you have like a third party schooling world that you need to report what it is that your student learned that week, Evan Moore does a great job to be like, look, this week we're learning about alphabetical awareness, letter recognition and beginning sounds. How sweet, right? So again, look at the color, it's full color, so it's easy to look at. There's lots of things that you can point out with your student. The A is for a, a, ant. Well, what about popcorn? Does popcorn start with A? No, p -p popcorn. You have watermelon, leaves, a button. So you can just talk about the different letter sounds and get your student to point out the letter A. Um, again, this is like beginning sounds. You're gonna be recognizing that. So. The whole section for letter for B is beginning letter sounds, right? Um, and they also have kind of intermixed in those. This might get kind of long. I better be quicker. Um, is going to be your uh, review, okay? So that's the first section. Then the next, so we would do like one page of blue and then one page of green. Again, so now we're going to be doing letter A again. Up on the top, it tells you what skill you're learning, learn formation of your letters. We're going to practice writing. And then they have some really simple um, capital A, like A starts with, what does it say? Start at the red dot. Okay, so you're learning color. Here's an example of purple. This is your early reading. So you're going to be teaching your student how to read from left to right, top to bottom. So that's what you're learning right now, right? So, you know, what does it say? Color the picture at the beginning of each row. Draw one more at the end of each row. So you want to recognize where's the beginning, where's the end of your book. And then you do have some like simple early sight words that you'll be teaching your student. When I look through this book, I think some of them are probably a little bit more than what my student can do. But I'm always excited to introduce a more difficult concept and just see how they digest it. And sometimes they surprise me because they're like really excited to learn and they want to memorize them. And other times I can feel the resistance. So then we back off. But I do encourage you to challenge your student and then just see how they receive it. And if they're excited about the challenge, continue to move forward. And if they are obviously not excited about it, then you can back off a little bit. So um, anyway, then in, on this page, we're going to be reviewing some of those sight words. Again, I love the color. Um, so here we have reading comprehension. You will read a sh little short story to your student about on the farm. You've got sheep. Get up, said the rooster. Can we eat? Ask the sheep. Three, four, five, six. And then you have like a little cut and paste activity where you're going to be, you know, it's sequencing essentially. Um, recall story details. Okay, here's your numbers. You're going to be practicing numbers. That's your math section. Super colorful. This one, you're going to be finding the number sixes that are all hidden with the astronaut. Um, you also have some uh, colors. So recognize the colors. Color everything the right color. And then shapes is in here. Sorting and matching. It does have some science. Not a lot, but a little bit of science here. And then one of the other pages that's in here, it's towards the end, is um, these STEM pages. Now, I've done a look in the book for STEM. Evan Moore has an entire book just on STEM. So I really love those. They've always been something that my students love going through. I haven't purchased new ones since we finished our last ones, but it was kind of fun to see that these were at the end of that one, okay? So that's pre-K. Let me show you first grade. I didn't get the kindergarten level, but the first grade level, again, it has all of the same things, um, except for the English section, you're gonna be doing reading, writing, math, phonics, 
handwriting, grammar and punctuation, spelling and vocabulary, okay? Again, you have it all divided up by color. You can see on the side here. So I just tell my students, you know, turn to the purple section and do the next page and then do the next page in green. Or on their like checklist, I'll just put the, the actual number. So like the page number that they have to do. So for first grade, you first practice your letters in the very beginning. That goes by super fast. Um, and then you start doing more like phonetic concepts. So we're learning about syllables, short vowels, long vowels, sounds. Um, we have a few CVC words that we're doing here. Um, digraphs, pairs, the OU pairs, OW pairs. So they're really short lessons. This is not intended to be a standalone curriculum. Like I mentioned, we're at the end of um, the fourth quarter, or we're just starting our fourth quarter, and I'm using this as like kind of to see where my students place. So if they understand the concept and they can get it really quick, then I check it off. If they don't understand it, if my student's reading, you know, O-U-O-W, and they are like, I don't know what that sound is, then I'm like, okay, we need to step back and we need to make sure that we are in the right place. All that being said, so my students K-5, when I got first grade, I, I was in my brain thinking it's moving into first grade, and that's not the case. This is very much like a end of first grade thing, and for some reason when I ordered it, my brain wasn't in the right place. So I would not purchase first grade if your student is finishing kindergarten, okay? Get first grade if your student is finishing first grade. So there's that. There's a lot of stuff in here that my daughter will not be able to do, but okay. All right, let me quickly show you what else is in here. So this is the grammar and punctuation. Um, at the beginning of each color section, it does tell you what it is. So you're going to be practicing nouns, which my daughter did know what a noun was when we did this page. Um, and then there is more handwriting, so she does write a lot. And there's a lot of reading, so I do a lot of reading with my daughter, right? I read it to her. This and that, these are those. Um joining words, all that kind of stuff. Here's your spelling and vocabulary pages. These are um, these are the blue pages. And when I did this with my daughter, we were more listening for the long vowel and the short vowel, not necessarily that she knew how to spell the words, which I'm pretty sure it's intended that she knows how to spell them, but she's not at a first grade level. So they have all of those. This again is, um, what's the turquoise here? It looks like science, but it's reading. Um, so they read the little text here. Again, that's pretty much more than what my student can read. I don't know. She'd probably get tired. She could probably get most of those words. But anyway, then you have like a little activity that you do here. And then the cool part is that then they have like a hands-on activity. So you're going to actually be cutting and pasting and making this little sea turtle. Cute, right? So it's not just all text. It's It's got some activities on there too. So here's Barty's best friend. Read the text. You know, do the little like question and answer page. That one doesn't have an activity. Pictures help. What does it say? Pictures help us understand. Here's some more pictures. Okay. So that's the reading section. And then we have finish the poems. Okay. So this light green is going to be your writing section where you're going to teach about poems and then your student can write them. Again, not intended to be a standalone curriculum. I'm using it more as a review curriculum, but you can at least see what level the reading is at and if that's going to be the right level, level for your student. So here's math. My daughter is in first grade math level, so she would be able to do most of these pages. Um, counting by tens, graphing, that sort of thing. And then they have computer science and like how computers work and coding pages at the end. I haven't really gotten into that type of subject with my kids, um, but there's that. And then this, these light blue ones, that's not coding. These are our science pages, which we haven't done a lot of science, I won't lie, but there's those pages. And then um, at the end, like I mentioned, we do have these STEM challenges. So this is like a Morocco music page. I'm sure there's a story on the previous page, which I didn't show you. There you go. So there's a whole story and then you talk about it and then you do like this little STEM pages, right? Okay, so 
This is the first grade level. And then the third grade level is gonna be the same idea. You've got all of your light color coded. It's just gonna be at your third grade level. So um, we've got grammar and punctuation is where it starts, spelling and vocabulary, reading, writing. They have a section called Mindful Moments, which is like one page, and it's just kind of like breathing exercises and mindfulness, but it's one page, so it's not that big. Um, this one does have social studies in it as well, um, but some things that your student will be covering. So we have possessive nouns and irregular plural nouns, um, abstract nouns. So it's definitely a step up, right? Which is nice, so, what is that? Superlative adjectives. To all of my like English majors out there, I'm sorry that you had to like <laughs> listen to me say that, right? Okay, adverbs, subject verbs. So you're going over all of these grammars. That's really nice to see. Again, I have my student do one page per day and if we hit something that he's like, uh, I don't know what that is, then I'm like, okay, I know that we need to work on this. Here's our spelling. We have such issues with spelling, but anyway, you can kind of see this particular one was like, read the story and find the misspelled words. Um, here's some more. It's not like a, here's, it's not like a spelling list, right? And with a bunch of activities, they're, they're just kind of reviewing the words that your students should know, which we don't. Okay, compare and contrast. So this is your reading one. Um, your student reads and each one of these texts is kind of a different. So you have like informational text that they read, comparing and contrasting, cause and effect, sequencing, facts, opinions, main ideas, inferences, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So they're reading different kinds of facts or kinds of text. And then they have like a little questionnaire, which is important to learn how to do that. Again, they also have little activities in the third grade level, which is fun to do something different that goes along with what you're reading. Okay. The writing section, I have another resource from Evan Moore. It's called how uh, step-by-step -step writing, maybe how to write. I'll put a link in here before I've done a video on it, but I've been using that resource a lot and I really like it. But um, this is just a more colorful, whatever, version of that. So you're gonna just be talking about clear ideas and main main ideas, um, details. Anyway, it just kind of goes through about how to write or how to like help your student organize their thoughts to write something, writing a narrative, writing your opinion. So there's definitely more of a expectation to have your students know how to write something. So if you're looking for something to help guide that, then this is a great resource to help you do that, okay? Um, it does have a full math section. Now, when I went through this, I kind of like glanced through it and all of the concepts that were shown, my student has practiced multiple times in his curriculum. So we do Horizons, if you don't know, uh, and we're on level three, and all of these things he has covered. So I don't think that I will really have him do these pages because we are still doing his Horizons every day. But um, it was just kind of nice to see that it complements what my student is doing. Um, I think that there are a few additional concepts that my student is doing, but... Um, Anyway, for the most part, it was nice. So here's we're learning about measurements, time flies. So these are just word problems with talking about time, okay? Um, it does have a computer science section. I, again, I don't really like go much into this because I don't know, whatever. My kids have a lot of computer practice and computer work, so I guess I probably should. But anyway, I don't. And then this is your science Again, this is motion, which is actually what we're doing right now with my student. Animals can work together. It's a lot of text that you can read and then, you know, answer the questions. So weather, same idea, text and reading. And then this is the STEM section. And like I mentioned, I've used STEM before, but these ones just have different topics. So what do we have? The, uh, I can't read it backwards, anometer, anno, and Okay, there's that. <laughs> and it's like a barometer, I guess, but it just measures weather. And so anyway, dams. So then you're gonna, your child's gonna build a dam and they have to build a dam that lasts for an hour. So that's kind of fun. 
Um, and then here's your social studies, which is mostly about being a citizen. I'll be honest. I, when I was looking through it, you're just learning about different countries and how we can be good global citizens. So I think, you know, obviously you should be talking a bit about that. But I think that when you start getting into third, fourth, fifth grade, um, they're more kind of like um, event based, I guess you could say, instead of like citizen based. You do citizenship in the early elementary years. And then after that, it's like what wars were there and what state do you live in and geography and all that kind of stuff. So it's nice that you can kind of go back to the environment and some holidays that are different than ours and that sort of thing. So I'll just show you the mindful moment. Each of the levels have this mindful moment and you can see it just has like how many five little steps about breathing. And then here's like a picture. They're like, color this picture, mind picture mindfully. So you could put on some like soft music and do that activity with them. So anyway, and then there's, what is this down here at the end? Uh, sorry, it's taking me a minute. Oh, this is social and emotional learning at the end. So just kind of like, what is a responsible thing to do? Um, how do you show your emotions? That sort of thing. So these are great. I'm really excited about it. I think that they have them through sixth grade. And once again, this is not intended to be a standalone curriculum. I wouldn't recommend it as that. But if you're looking for something to um, review all of your subject areas, if you're at the end of the school year, or if you're looking into summer and you're like, I want to have something that'll keep my kids sharp during the summer, this is a really great inexpensive resource. It has, they're really big, so there's lots of pages, right? And you can just put them up on your bookshelf and have, you know, your students do a couple of pages a day just to make sure that they're staying sharp in the grade level that they have. Um, don't make my mistake and, and purchase a grade above because there's going to be a lot of difficult concepts in here for my five-year-old. But um, I'm excited about it. I will put a link in my description box below if you want to check them out. Click that link. It'll hit you over there and then you can check them out. So, all right. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you made it all the way to the end, <laughs> thanks so much. Give me a thumbs up if you are still here and listening and um, we'll catch you in another one. Bye friends.